Hi guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Does something look different? Well, this isn't the first video I've ever recorded on my brand new camera setup that I have going on. I'll probably post a video about my setup upgrade later. I spent a hot minute trying to get the setup to work, and this is kind of what we're rocking with for now. My camera shutter does turn off every 30 minutes because that's the longest I can set it on my camera right now. Still trying to get it to work, and I'm still getting used to staring at the camera because it is a bit ways higher up than my webcam was so i'm looking quite farther up now man sucks being short anyways this is a highly 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 requested video and i've actually recorded this once already and then completely lost the footage for it i performed this demo on stream and then i don't know what happened to the footage so we are doing it again but this is my youtube thumbnail setup so in case you didn't know when I make all my YouTube thumbnails, I actually make everything in the same working Photoshop file. So it is super easy and it completely streamlines my process. So in this video, I'm going to split it up into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you the working thumbnail template that I use specifically. And then we're going to go through together on how you can go and set one up for yourself. So this is the thumbnail Photoshop file that I make all of my YouTube thumbnails in. I'm in the top right corner this time. I feel like I've never put myself up here, but I feel like this is the best place to be so I can efficiently show you everything that I want. I wish I had nested these layers a little bit better so you can get a better view of this, but I have cutouts of myself pre-saved already. So for instance, there's this cutout of me. I have another cutout of me. So I have a whole bunch of cutouts of myself making different expressions. I put these all into my file. So if you look through my YouTube thumbnails, you'll notice that the photos I use for the thumbnails are all the same thumbnail or all the same photos. The first thing that I do is I scroll through and whichever the theme of my video is, whichever vibe it is, I will find the appropriate expression of mine to use. So maybe if I'm making something shocked right now, that would be the face that I use. Secondly, I already have text that I've pre-added as well. So typically, depending on the topic of my video, I will put something clickbaity related to that in the video thumbnail. So for instance, I have a YouTube video that I was originally making called something about Discord overlays. So I can literally just write Discord overlays like this. I also already have icons pre-added into my thumbnail. So again, I have this red arrow, I have some Twitch icons, Twitter icons, etc. Instagram, I have a Discord one, which is gonna be the one that we're using. So I'm just gonna to toggle off the icons that I don't need, and we're just gonna use the icon that we want, and I'm gonna zoom it up so it's a little bit larger. All right, so here's some fake Discord overlay things that I made. So the last thing that I would ever do when I'm making these thumbnails is just kind of like arranging everything so they look a little bit more interesting. Doing a little bit of a perspective distortion is always kind of fun. Lastly, just to make things pop, I like to go and add a little bit of a drop shadow. So, oh gosh, make these a little bit softer. And yeah, I would call this a day for the thumbnail. The very last thing that I do, I have different gradients. So I have these red gradients, I have this orange gradients, I have this blue gradient. So I would just toggle between the gradients that I have to see which one fits the best. I kind of just toggle on, sometimes I'll turn on multiple gradients all at once just to kind of get a little bit of a different vibe. I'm a really big fan of colorful looking thumbnails and this took me literally like three minutes and we're done. Obviously, if you have the time, I think it's more worth it if you make each thumbnail individually without, you know, necessarily using a template like this. But if you're really on, a, really on a time crunch, once you get a template like this set up, it can save you hours and hours of time. Now that I give you a walkthrough of my YouTube thumbnail template setup, let's go and set up one together. So we're going to go and make a new file. YouTube thumbnails are 1280 by 720. So that's going to be the size that we're going to make it in and make the DPI 300. So now we have a completely blank template to work with. I would suggest if you do have a favorite base color, just to pick one and we're going to work from that. I'm a really big fan of blues. So we're just going to go and fill the background with blue just so we have a little bit of color to work with here. Next, and I'm not going to show you this on camera, but just go and take some high resolution selfies of yourself. I literally just use my phone. I just held my phone out and took a whole bunch of selfies of myself. I tried holding it in a way where you could see both of my shoulders though, so I didn't get too awkward of a crop. And go and add one of those photos onto your Photoshop file. Also, if you are making, or sorry, when you're taking these selfies of yourself, by the way, just do the general expressive feature. So happy and then sad 
and then angry and then also pointing your finger like at something you know hypothetically you're gonna put it on the thumbnail later those are just expressions that i work with also if you're a faceless creator you can completely skip this option but i also know a lot of other faceless creators who either have a png tuber or a vtuber if you do have the funds for it or if you're a talented artist i would either make or commission artists to go and draw your oc or your persona as making these expressive expressions there is a youtuber that i like to watch called dacha celestia and i far as far as i know they draw their own character and they just draw themselves making a whole bunch of different expressions and just use it in all of their thumbnails i really love how it looks when we upload a photo it will have this little clipboard looking icon here that means you can't edit it yet so we're gonna right click it and click rasterize layer this will allow us to make edits to our image and then I'm going to go right click the lasso tool. I personally like to use the polygon selection tool. I just think it does the best job for selecting. I will then manually cut out my person, myself, my body out of the background. Some people like to use the magic wand selection tool, which does work sometimes. It only works if your self, your body or whatever I character person you're trying to cut out of the image has a really stark contrast against the background. As you can see here, part, most chunks of my hair or a good chunk of my hair is blonde and the wall in the background is this burnt orange color and this chair is this bright yellow and there's also black. It's not going to be easy to use the magic wand tool to cut myself out of the background due to all of these conflicting colors. So that is why I use the polygon lasso selection tool. I also find that it does just a cleaner cut around the edges with the lasso tool or sorry the magic wand tool sometimes it leaves the edges a little bit fuzzy i'm just gonna go and then delete everything that i cut like so and we have a little cutout of ourselves now so i like to put myself in a corner of the thumbnail you can either put yourself to the left or the right side it's really up to you i just chose the left side just because honestly i would actually say the right side is better so i might move myself over to the right side from now on mainly because youtube sticks a little timer you know of the length of your video that sticker goes in the bottom right and so that's typically if i were to put my body over here that would be where you know my chest is you don't need to see that so it's fine now we're gonna go under layer layer style and this is my personal preference you don't have to do this i like adding a white outline around myself so i will go to the layer selection tool select white Position outside blend mode normal and make the size 10. That's my personal preference. Other people like adding an outer glow, a drop shadow, or not doing that at all. So I'm just gonna use a transform tool to make myself a little bit bigger and put myself over to the side. One last thing that I like to add, I'm gonna go back to layer, layer style. And we're gonna go under drop shadow. I like adding a little drop shadow behind. It just makes me pop a little bit better. I really like the sticker cutout look this makes. So we're going to make the blend mode multiply for the color. You can just select pure black and opacity 100%. And this is the settings that I have for my multiply. But you can just kind of like toggle around. I just fiddle with it. I never really use the same setting. Each cutout kind of has like a different multiply layer in the background or a different drop shot on the background. So that's one. Secondly, in the background, I would go and add some textures. So it just kind of adds more fun and more spice into the background of your thumbnail. I used to use grids a lot. I'm still a really big fan of grids, actually. So on a new layer, we can go and drop a grid on here. I think this really looks good. I like grids. I wouldn't put such a big color contrast between the two, though. So I would lower the opacity a little bit of whatever texture you chose to add. So you can have a grid as an option. Also, don't be like me. If I could go through and redo my thumbnail, I would label everything clearer. So label your layers so it's easier for you later down the line. Like this, I would label it as grid, this one unimpressed. Also, to make your life easier as well, I didn't do this, but you should put your layers in fo folders. So we have selfies and then we can make a folder for textures and then put everything under there. 
So that way you don't have to dig through piles and piles of layers. After this YouTube video, I'm probably gonna go through and sort through my thumbnail and clean it up a little bit. What I use in my video specifically though, or in my thumbnail, I like to use a cogwheel. I saw Sam Woodall, I hope I'm pronouncing their name correctly, talk about this. They are Harris Heller's editor, and they said that they like using cogwheels in their thumbnails because it helps direct the eye towards something important and I thought it was super helpful. So I started using cogwheels in my thumbnails as well. I saw this from a YouTube tutorial and you can go look this up, but this is what I do to make a cogwheel. We're gonna go and add a gradient in whichever direction you would like to add. I don't know, top down like this and make the gradient about halfway. We're gonna go under filter and then distort and then wave. And then now you have to fiddle with this. So if you change the number of generators and the wavelength or whatever, it will turn into these bars. I probably should have used a darker color so it shows up a little bit better. But if you fiddle with it enough, it will make them turn into a whole bunch of vertical bars, like so. And then we're gonna go under filter again, we're gonna go back under distort, and then we're gonna do polar coordinates. And then if you set rectangular to polar, it will direct everything to the center, like so. And then I'm just gonna zoom this, make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more centered here. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity a lot. And what I like to do is I like to make it a screen layer because I like to go and add filters or like gradients over this. So that's how I make my cog wheel. So I'm just gonna label it this. And then fun parts, I also like adding gradients. So again, on our gradient tool, I like to use some color contrast. We like to play around with it a little. Oh, that's not it. I just play around with it a little bit so I can add one little bright teal color. I also like putting the gradients in different directions. To be honest, when I make my gradients, there are, there's no rhyme or reason for whatever colors, directions I'm selecting. I just kind of mess it up. So if the first gradient I did, I used a bunch of bright colors. This one, I made a bunch of dark colors. This one, I use a different direction. Anyways. You just have fun with the gradients. Also, again, you can toggle on multiple gradients at one time. You don't need to use like only one, for instance. So this looks good. And one thing too, if this color, if these colors are still looking a little too bright, like for instance, if I were to want it to be darker, I would just pick a darker color. So I picked a dark blue, throw that over there, and then just make it a multiply layer. And we can lower the opacity. That'll just darken everything overall. Sometimes I fiddle with the adding a multiply layer just to kind of get more of an effect that I want, but I'm not gonna do that for this video. So now we have our background textures, our selfie added. Now we're gonna add text. I keep the same text every single time, the text file, I just change the words. So horizontal type, I'm gonna type, I don't know, what thumbnail should I make this time? What YouTube? Ooh, this could be an inception moment and I could literally make the thumbnail for this video in this video. Well, we'll see. We'll see if I use this one, but something like, um, we could do something like this thumbnail tutorial. So I want to make it bigger. So this gives me more of an oomph. Thumbnails are quite small. So if you're going to add text, you want to make it visible. Also don't add too much text. I literally added two words, right? When you use the auto spaced line spacing in text it looks ugly this looks i this this does not look good okay always adjust it and always make it pretty close together so i'm gonna make the current the spacing about here actually this is too close i'm gonna make the spacing about 32 between the two this looks way better in my personal opinion than the way the first one looked with the auto spacing now what i like to do with my text is i don't like to use this whatever default text color is i go under layer layer style and i like to go and add a gradient overlay onto it to add a little text gradient so the red orange was one that i've used before if we're being we can change it up a little bit let's try some pinks maybe something like this you know thumbnail tutorial again i like to add strokes to things so layer layer style we're gonna add a stroke and that adds a white outline around our text. Again, I'm just gonna use the size 10 for the stroke. I also, again, like to add drop shadows. We're gonna use the default drop shadow. If you added a drop shadow for one thing, it'll just save your settings. So I'm just gonna use the same one I use for my selfie as I'm gonna use for the text. So now we're gonna have text that says thumbnail tutorial. I like to kind of turn things a little bit. I don't like keeping the, it default straight because it gets a little boring sometimes, like so. Now, lastly, we're going to want to go and populate this with a bunch of 
commonly used images. I do tutorial content, so I'm constantly using images of social media logos like the YouTube logo, Discord logo. I'm using that repetitively in my YouTube thumbnails, depending on what thumbnails you're making. If you are, if you make Minecraft content, right, you probably will, con I don't know, use a lot of images of Minecraft mushrooms, Minecraft cows. I don't know if you make dream con like images of dream, I don't know. But if you have things that you repetitively use as icons or whatever in your YouTube thumbnails, just literally make a folder for these repeated icons. And then I literally have a whole folder on my computer just full of icons too that I also commonly use or have used in videos before. So I have my YouTube logo. I'm just gonna drag that here. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna put it in my icon folder. Also, I'm just gonna rasterize the layer so I can edit this a little bit. I don't like how saturated the red is. It's a little bit, uh, it's burning my eyes a little bit. I'm gonna change the red just a little bit so it's not as glaring. I know it's not the correct color, but I just, it was burning my eyes, man. And then you can vary it a little bit. You don't need to add the like white outline to everything. Another one that looks really good too is the outer glow. If you add a little white outer glow to your icon, so you want to make sure the color is white and change the blend mode to screen. You can also change the opacity of it and then the noise and you can change the size. So I like to make it a little bit uh, smaller and I wouldn't want to make the opacity as bright. And there we go. We have now made a thumbnail for YouTube and a whole template at that. So. The next time you were to go in to go and make a YouTube thumbnail, all you have to do now is use this exact template to save this Photoshop file as YouTube template or whatever you want to name it. And the next time you're making another video, go back in and then use a different selfie of yourself that would represent the video better. Just change the text, change the icon, and then maybe like toggle a different gradient or toggle on a different texture in the background, whatever you see fit. You know, you can change the colors a little bit. We can work with something like this. Bam, you're done. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I am so sorry, Esme. I know this video took a really long time. Shout out to you for constantly nagging me about this. I finally remembered it, made it, and I think this is a good video to make. So I hope you guys like it. But if you like this video, I'd appreciate it. If you liked it, subscribe. More of these videos will be coming out very soon for you guys. I'm trying to crank out more. January is the busiest month for me for work. By the time you see this video, it might not be January anymore, but this was filmed January 18th. And anyways, I have been rambling for a really long- Oh my god, my shirt has been backwards this entire time. Well, anyways, um, don't forget to check me out on Coffee. I have free resources for streamers and content creators. Or check me out on Etsy. I sell emotes, overlays, sub badges, whatever you want as a streamer. I also stream on Twitch three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 7pm PST. So I hope to catch you guys there or in another one of my videos. Peace.